software continues to influence affect and automate more areas of our lives. So testing software becomes more valuable and important as we welcome new applications and devices into our homes and businesses to take command of important tasks. Hey guys, I'm Archana from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session on automation testing. But before we proceed, let's go ahead and take a look at topics that we will be talking about today. We will start the session by discussing what is software testing and why is it important? Then we will cover the basics of automated software testing like what it is, why it's necessary for the IT industry and how to make sense of the technology behind it. We will also check out the differences between manual testing and automation testing. Finally, we will end this session by discussing popular automation testing tools. So I hope agenda was clear to you guys. Let's get started then. On April 26, 1994, Aircraft named Airbus A300 was completing a routine flight and approach when just before landing at airport it crashed. The crash killed about 264 people and to date the accident remains the deadliest accident in the history of China Airlines. Similarly, on August 14, 2003, shortly after 2 p.m., a high voltage power line in northern Ohio brushed against some overgrown trees and shut down completely. 50 billion people lost power for up to two days in the biggest blackout in North American history that day. Normally, the problem would have tripped an alarm in the control room, but due to software glitches, the alarm system failed. In April of 1999, there was failure of a $12 billion military satellite launch. It was due to some sort of technical issue in satellite's guidance system. Similarly, in 1985, Canada's Therac 25 radiation therapy machine malfunctioned due to some software bug and delivered lethal radiation to patients, leaving three people dead and critically injuring three others. So now you might be wondering, why am I discussing all this here, right? Well, all the incidents that I mentioned just now happened because of the software bugs. Software used here was not tested before implementing. Every system has software bugs. It's impossible to design and bring out a perfect software product. Fundamentally, the world itself is imprecise and unpredictable, and all the software systems connect to the real world in one or the other way. So software testing is very important. Software testing basically is the process of executing the software or an application to find out if there are any kind of bugs or some sort of errors in it. As the name already suggests, the software testing means checking the developed software for any mistakes and problems in the initial design of software. So the incidents that we discussed earlier are just few. There are many other fatal incidents that occur due to lack of software testing. So software testing gives confidence in the quality of final product. It confirms that the application has no errors in the code. It verifies how the user can work with the application and ensures that the end product is very easy to use. It also tests for the bugs in the software in the initial stages of development and until the software is ready. It confirms that the application is able to operate in all the required conditions and on all supported operating systems or web browsers correctly and safely. So before actually software goes public, programmers spend hours trying to iron out every little bug there is in software. And that is what we call software testing. Testing is broadly classified as manual testing and automated testing. So manual testing, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? Testing of a web application is done manually by human action. That's what we call manual testing. This means that someone actually goes on a device to evaluate numerous components, including design, functionality, and performance of software. So they click through multiple elements or units of web application without any support from tool or script. Thorough testing is crucial to the success of a software product. If your software doesn't work properly, chances are strong that most people won't buy it or even use it, at least not for long, even if they buy it. But testing to find defects or some sort of bugs is very time consuming, expensive, often repetitive, and subjective to human error if you are using manual testing. So this is where automation testing comes into picture. Automation testing, well, it's automated. The buzzword automation focuses on replacing manual human activity with systems or devices that enhance efficiency of software. Test automation, or usually referred as automation testing, uses different kind of tools, scripts, and software to perform test cases by repeating predefined actions. 
So by automating your software testing activities, you will definitely get a competitive edge in the market. So let me give you some examples. Amazon is testing delivery drones that pick up warehouse orders sorted by robots. Google is testing self-driving cars. Starbucks is testing cashier-free stores dedicated to mobile ordering and payment. Facebook is testing a brain-computer interface that may one day translate thoughts into digital text. Fascinating, right? There are mundane versions of automation technology behind all this testing. Software automation testing. Companies use automation technology to create the software responsible for the products and services causing all this hype about automation testing. When you actually begin testing, one of the primary decisions that you'll have to make is if to choose manual testing or automated testing. While neither of these options are technically better or worse when compared to each other, factors like size, budget, time allowance of the project will certainly be factors that affect which method will work best in the situation. So you should be aware of distinct differences between manual testing and automated testing. So here we go. The first difference, obviously the definition, which we discussed earlier. In manual testing, test cases are executed by human tester and software, whereas automation testing uses different kind of automation tools and scripts to execute test cases. So let's get started with other factors. The first is reliability. For a testing phase where duration is very long, there are high chances of an undetected error when testing is performed manually. Every time a small defect is fixed, the entire application needs to be tested to ensure that any other breakage is not occurring. Well, the process is tiring and boring, so testers often miss out critical defects while performing repeated testing. It's a common human behavior, right? Therefore, the accuracy and reliability of manual testing is very low. Automated testing, on the other hand, is more reliable. Tools or the scripts that you use form the automated test. If the script is properly written, there is no chance of missing a defect when the test is executed over and over again. And obviously, it's not boring as well for the machine, right? When it comes to reliability, automated testing is highly reliable. Then comes the time required to perform the testing. Manual testing is obviously time consuming. It takes up human resources. But when it comes to automated testing, it's executed by software tools and different kind of scripts. So it is significantly faster when compared to manual testing. Next we have when to use which kind of testing. Manual testing is suitable when the test cases are run once or twice. Therefore, there's no frequent repetition of test cases in manual testing. So to name manual testing is suitable for exploratory or usability and ad hoc testing. Automated testing is suitable when the test cases need to be run repeatedly for a long duration of time. Automation testing is suited for regression testing, performance testing, load testing, or highly repeatable functional test cases. And next we have performance and batch testing, which is not possible in manual testing. You can batch multiple test scripts in automated testing. Performance tests like load testing, stress testing, spike testing, etc., have to be tested by an automation tool compulsorily in software testing process. Then we have investment costs. The cost of manual testing is usually dependent upon the human resources deployed in the testing during the initial stages of testing. The initial investment in manual testing is comparatively lower, but the return of investment is very low when compared to automation testing. When I say return of investment, I mean the money that you earn as a revenue at the end of the software testing or after selling the product is actually low when compared to automation testing in long run that is. But the cost of automated testing is dependent upon testing tools deployed for performing the tests. But the initial investment in automation testing is usually higher, though the return of investment is better in long run. So when it comes to investment cost, initial investment, Manual testing is much preferable, but if you want to perform testing for longer run, then automation testing is much preferable. As the last criteria, we have human element. Manual testing allows human observation, right? So you're getting exact kind of feedback a person would give you, and that can be invaluable. Being able to predict what your users will or won't like, things that a computer can't give feedback on ahead of time can influence your design and make it much better from the bottom up. It improves the customer's experience. But when it comes to automated testing, as there is no human observation involved, there is no guarantee of positive customer experience. So when it comes to human element, 
manual testing is much better because you get to have a nice experience since the humans are the ones who are checking the software. So guys, these are some differences that you should be aware of between manual testing and automation testing. So to summarize what we've learned till now, automation testing is a lot of advantages over manual testing. First of all, it saves a lot of time and money. It improves test accuracy. It increases the test coverage as in you can perform tests repetitively on different kind of devices. Complex tests and boring tasks are made very easy and comfortable. It increases efficiency and team morale. You no longer have to do the boring and repetitive tasks. There'll be no human errors. Obviously, it reduces maintenance cost of testing. It increases speed of executing tests and many more advantages. So in short, while manual testing is effective in projects with multiple operating environments and hardware configurations, automation testing is absolutely essential today to successfully deliver large scale products that need execution of repetitive and complex test cases. But it's impossible to automate all testing. So it is important to determine what test cases should be automated first. So guys, let's go ahead and take a look at use cases where automation testing have to be applied because like I said, you can't apply automation everywhere. First of all, as you guys know, repetitive tasks are primary candidates for automation. Take an e-commerce site for an example. It may be testing entering in user credentials multiple times. Consider the tasks that you hate doing. Not only are these tasks boring to you, but they're often the ones where mistakes are made very commonly. So automate them and do something more fun. Next capturing and sharing results is obviously a critical part of successful test strategy rather than manually exporting your data crunching the numbers and making petty graphs invest in a tool or automation strategy that will do this for you thereby you can save time and a lot of effort on your part and obviously tests that require multiple data sets rather than manually typing in information into forms or fields automate this process to read in information from a data source and automatically type into the respective forms this way you will have better handle on your data variability and it also decreases the chances of making mistakes repetitively again and suppose if you're waiting for an on-screen response it can be automated so you do not have to waste time staring at a screen and watching for a response right you have other better things to do Put that time to better use and use automated controls like wait until in your program code. Then you have non functional testing. A good example of automating non functional testing types is automating load testing. Think about having to see if your application can handle a load of 10,000 users. Automate this testing so you do not have to worry about manually spinning up 10,000 users hitting your application all at once. Test that run on several different hardware or software platforms and configurations. So as the number of device users interact with increases automating your setup or tearing down your setup environment will continue to be critical. Additionally, these are scripts that you will use over and over again in multiple testing frameworks, right? It's better to automate than to do them manually. So basically the cases where you have to automate is when you have repetitive and boring tasks or if you have to capture some results and share the results or if you have to repetitively enter the data tasks as in data entry tasks or some sort of timing or screening responsiveness and especially in load testing or and suppose if you want to set up or tear down your environment setup then you can use automation. So guys it's always better to know when to use or when to apply automation in software testing. So guys success in test automation process requires careful planning and design work. Start out by creating an automated plan. This allows you to identify the initial set of tests which to automate and serve as a guide for future tests as well. There are a lot of helpful tools to write automation scripts before using those tools. It's better to identify the process which can be used to automate the testing or the procedure that you have to follow to start automation. So as next part of session we will discuss the steps that you need to follow when you're performing automation testing. So like I said earlier success in test automation requires care for planning and design work. So start out by creating an automation plan. First of all, you should define your goal for automated testing and determine which type of test to automate. Once you're sure of what kind of test are you performing, you need to select the tool. So the first step here is test tool selection. There are several kinds of testing tools available. However, choosing the right tool, keeping in mind the nature of test involved is very important for your automation to be successful. So whether it's a code driven testing process or graphical user interface based testing, you must set up properly a tool to automate the testing. 
So the first step is selecting the proper tool required for automation of your application or testing. Next comes defining scope of automation as in you need to select which test cases to automate. Here you can follow certain pointers like the features that are important for business scenarios which have large amount of data or those which has common functionalities across different platforms and applications technical feasibility the extent to which business components are reused the complexity of test cases etc. So by keeping these pointers in mind you can define the scope of automation and the third step is planning design and development. After determining your goal and which type of test to automate, you should decide what actions your automated test will perform. Planning, design, and development. Develop test cases. Don't just create test steps that test various aspects of applications behavior at one time. It becomes overwhelming. Large complex automated tests are difficult to edit and debug as well. So it will be a problem for you later on. So it is best to divide your tests into several logical smaller tests. So once you've developed your test cases or you have written your test scripts next step is to develop test suits. Test suits are developed to ensure that the automated tests which you have written run one after the other without any manual intervention. This is done by creating a test suit that has multiple test cases a library and command line tool that runs the best suit. So guys the next step is test execution. Once you're done with writing your scripts and placing them in suitable test suits. The next step is to start executing them. Automation scripts are executed during this test execution phase. So execution can be performed using automation tool directly or through the test management tool which will invoke the automation tool which you have chosen. To get the most out of your automated testing, testing should be started as early as possible and as often as needed as well. The earlier testers get involved in the life cycle of the project, the better. And more you test the more bucks you can find right? So yeah, your scripts are executed in this phase. Once executed the next step obviously is to create report formats so that individual test logs with details of action performed during tests are recorded properly for references. So you define the type of test report format to be created screenshots messages etc. So all such things you include in your report. As new functionalities are added to system under test with successive cycles automation scripts need to be added reviewed and maintained for each release cycle right. So maintenance becomes necessary to improve the effectiveness of automation scripts. So what I mean here is that you do not entirely finish a product and start testing. Suppose if you have found some bug you add additional features and again start your testing from the beginning. So maintenance plays a very important role and it becomes necessary step to improve the effectiveness of your automation scripts. So you need to follow these steps when performing automation testing to get the best results and efficient results. Next comes the automation tools. There are several innovative automation testing tools, but before we discuss that we need to understand there are different kind of approaches to automation. The first one is we have code driven approach. This approach uses testing frameworks like X unit framework, etc. The focus here is mainly on test case execution to find out if various sections of code are performing as per our expectations under different conditions or not. So code driven testing approach is a popular method used in agile software development. Then we have graphical user interface applications that have GUIs or graphical user interface may be tested using this approach. It allows the testers to record user actions and analyze them any number of times. So this is one way of going at automation. For example, if you want to test a website, you can use automated testing tools like Selenium that provides a record and playback tool for authoring tests without any knowledge on test scripting language. So you do not basically have to know the scripting language here. You do have record and playback tool using which you can start executing your test. Test cases can be written in any number of programming languages like C sharp. You have Java, Perl, Python, Ruby and many other options. So the next approach is using automation framework. So basically a test automation framework is set of guidelines which are used to produce beneficial results of automation testing activity. This framework brings together function libraries test data sources object details and other reusable modules. It lays down the general rules of automation and it simplifies the effort required to bring the efficient results and lower your maintenance cost as well. So basically you can say you're setting down a set of rules that you need to follow while performing your automation testing. Let's consider an example. 
suppose if there is any change in a test case then only that particular test case file needs to be updated without having to make any change to the driver or the startup script so now you have multiple approaches when it comes to frameworks frameworks could be linear scripting framework recording and replaying test scripts in sequential or you can say a linear fashion you have data driven framework a constant source of test criteria specifies the test scripts which you have to run here then you have keyword driven framework here the tables on a spreadsheet actually specify the action of a test scripts that need to be performed based on the library of functions for an assigned keyword then you have modular testing framework modules of an application under test are divided and then tested with individual test scripts and then they can be combined for larger test scripts then you have hybrid testing framework obviously it's a combination of frameworks to leverage the strengths of each of the ones which we discussed earlier when you've decided to perform automation testing you can opt for any of these approaches you can go for code driven testing you can also go for graphical user interface if you're testing graphical user interface then you can go for framework approach and you have multiple framework options here as well like linear which performs testing in a linear fashion then you have data driven keyword driven modular testing and hybrid testing which is a combination of all the other framework types so yeah guys basically there are ways you can implement automation while software testing so now moving on to test automation tools selecting an automated testing tool is essential for test automation well there are a lot of automated testing tools in market and it is important to choose the automated testing tool that best suits your requirement so basically when you're trying to test or select an automation tool please do follow the key points which i'll mention now first of all check if the tool is compatible with platforms and the different kind of technology that you're using ask yourself do you need support for mobile automation testing or different other kinds of testing are you testing dotnet c sharp or other applications if yes and then on what operating systems so next flexibility of the testers also plays a very important role that is what kind of skills your tester have also plays a very important role for example can your qa department write automated test scripts or is there a need for keyword testing thirdly does the automated testing tool support record and playback test creation as well as manual creation of automated tests so basically you need to consider these sort of questions or situations before you go ahead and select a tool you can also look if the tool includes features for implementing checkpoints to verify values databases or key functionality of your application you need to create automated tests that are reusable maintainable resistant to changes in the application ui right so ask yourself will my automated test break if my ui changes so based on that choose a tool make sure that the application is stable enough to automate the early development cycle unless or otherwise it is a agile environment it not be a good idea and finally the cost and the effort that you need to put in is also a very valuable concept that you should consider when you're choosing an automation tool for your testing well these are certain categories or scenarios or key points that you should take care of when you're actually choosing an automation tool now to name few popular automation testing tools we have selenium selenium is a popular testing framework to perform web application testing across multiple browsers and platforms like windows mac linux then we have water W A T I R basically it's pronounced as water is an open source testing tool made up of ruby libraries to automate web application testing then you have something called ranorex it is an flexible all in one gui testing tool so using ranorex you can execute automated tests flawlessly throughout all environments and browsers and devices then you have apm it's a mobile testing tool it is an open source mobile test automation software Obviously it's free and supported by a high active community of developers and experts. So apart from this you also have Zypher, Tosca for end to end testing, then HPE or Unified Functional Testing which was formerly known as HP Quick Test Professional or QTP and I can just keep going. There are plenty of automation testing tools. So tool selection is one of the biggest challenges that need to be tackled before you actually start with your automation. So first identify the requirements explore various tools get to know them and their capabilities set the expectations from the tool and go for a proof of concept so that's how you choose a tool of your choice so guys in some situations automation testing is very important but as much it is comfortable that much it is risky too so if you decide to do automation testing then think of following scenarios first starting cost for an automation is very high automation tool purchasing cost training and maintenance of test script all these costs are very high 
Because of this reason, some companies are worried to take decision to automate their work. Secondly, automation is not 100%. Automation testing cannot be 100% and don't think of that. There are areas like user interface, documentation, installation, compatibility, and recovery where testing should be done manually. You can't do all this using tools. You need to have a person involved in this. And another risk that you might encounter is when you have unrealistic expectations from the automation testing tool. So like I said earlier, know the requirement, study different kind of tools, get to know their capabilities and choose the tool. And then comes the incompatibility of automation testing tools with the test environment and other software testing tools in test environment. Then you have vendor issues like inability to provide technical support, inability to update the automation testing tools with changes in software testing platform and all that. And one more point, do not automate unfixed user interface. Be careful before automating user interface. If user interface is changing always, cost associated with script maintenance will be very high. So basic user interface automation is enough in such cases. By mentioning all these points, what I wanted to tell you is automation is not possible every time. And these are some cases where you might have to start looking twice before you actually implement automation here. So guys, there's no silver bullet for testing during the development process. Despite the wide variety of techniques and tools, we cannot rely on a single approach. Automated and manual testing each have their strengths and weaknesses. What we want to stress here is that no matter how great automated tests are, you cannot automate everything. Manual tests play important role in software development as well, and they come handy when you cannot automate the process. So guys, we have reached the end of the session. And by now I'm sure you know what automation testing is and benefits of using automation testing when to use this and which test cases need to be automated and how different it is from manual testing. So make sure to consider all these points when you go ahead with automation next time. So guys we have reached the end of the session and I hope you have understood what we have discussed here and if you have any doubt or queries regarding any part of the session, please do mention in the comment section below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you guys and we'll meet you in the next session. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning.